I was diagnosed in 2007. However, in 2003, I was a police officer and I went in to give blood. And a couple weeks later, I got a note from the Red Cross saying, thanks, but no thanks. They said that your blood's no good to us. Uh, it had some of these, these long words on that I did not even understand. But being a young 20-some-year-old person, I just kind of took up the letter, looked at it, and uh, just like any other kid, threw it away, didn't really think about it. Um, but at that point, um, it, it wasn't important to me. I mean, it was kind of at the back of my mind. Uh, the note said that I should probably go see a physician. However, again, when you're at that age, you're pretty much invincible, or at least you think you're invincible. So it wasn't until 2007, after receiving several samples or several um, high cholesterol results, I decided that I'd go see my uh, family physician. What he did is he uh, did the cholesterol check. It was high as we expected. At that point, he decided that he was gonna put me on a, a simvastatin, a cholesterol lowering drug, but he wanted to, he wanted to obtain a um, liver function test. As he did the liver function test, he found out that I had elevated ASTs, ALTs, which showed that there was something going on with the liver. So he ordered an ultrasound. With the ultrasound, found out that I had gallstones. And at that point, he decided, you know what, I want us to have you go see a um, surgeon to talk about the gallstones. So I talked to the surgeon. He opted to take the gallbladder out. And at that point, the surgeon went in. And after the surgery, once I was done, the surgeon said that it was the fattiest liver that he's ever seen. So that was kind of the, um, the beginning of my journey. It took two years to actually be diagnosed. I was sent to just about every uh, specialist that you can think of. Um, initially, it was kind of the gastroenterologist and then um, I went to an ophthalmologist, a cardiologist. Uh, uh, went to see just about anybody that you can think of. It was about two years later that my gastroenterologist eventually sent me to a pediatrician at the University of Minnesota who eventually decided, you know what, we're going to test for this. So she tested for lull deficiency and um, yeah, a few weeks later I got the results back and it was kind of a bittersweet moment that, okay, I know what it is. However, um, when I went on the internet, there wasn't anything on the internet about lull deficiency. Um, everything that was on the internet was all gloom and doom, like uh, the average age of someone with lull deficiency is only 45. They live to be 45, and then uh, that was kind of scary. It was pretty uh, stressful for me and my family, and there was no hope at that point. At that point, it was just um, thinking, okay, the, the internet says this, and that's kind of what I expected that was going to happen. It's like, okay, I'll... I continued to eat healthy, uh, my body weight was normal, I had normal BMI, but as I kind of continued to do research, eventually I found a, the clinical trial through um, the clinicaltrial.gov website that there was uh, treatment starting. So I made the phone call and it was April of 2011, I opted to uh, participate in the clinical trial. With the clinical trial, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I did my research, kind of talked to a bunch of different doctors to see what to expect, and none of them really had a, was overly concerned. They said that um, enzyme replacement therapy has been around for 20 some years, and so I was pretty comfortable going in. Uh, the first time I went in, um, it was just a, it's just an infusion. Um, it doesn't hurt. I had no adverse reaction. Um, I just sat there and got the drip for, like I said, about two and a half hours. And I have been on the trial for since 2011, so it's going on four years. And the results have been amazing.